first of all let's learn about the advantages of eeg electro encephalogram hard hardware costs are significantly lower than those of most other techniques eeg prevents limited availability of technologists to provide immediate care in high traffic hospitals eeg sensors can be used in more places than fmri pet scan mr scan meg as this techniques require bulky and immobile equipment for example meg requires equipment consist of liquid helium cold detectors that can be used only in the magnetically shielded rooms altogether costing upwards of several million dollars and i fmri requires use of a 1 ton magnet in again in a shielded room eeg has very high temporal resolution on the order of milliseconds rather than seconds eeg is commonly recorded as sampling rates between 250 and 2000 hertz in clinical and research settings but modern eeg data collection systems are capable of recording at sampling rates above 20000 hertz if desired meg and eros are the only other non invasive cognitive neuroscience techniques that require data at this level of temporal resolution eeg is relatively tolerant of subject movement unlike most other neuroimaging techniques this even exist methods of minimizing and even eliminating movements artifacts in eeg data eeg is silent which allows for better study of the response to auditory stimuli eeg does not aggravate claustrophobia and like if a mri or mri and pet scan or sometimes meg eeg does not involve exposure to high intensity magnetic fields as in some of the other techniques especially fmri and mri this can cause a variety of thousands of undesirable issues which with the data and also prohibit use of this techniques with participants that have metal implants in their body such as metal co- containing pacemakers eeg does not involve exposure to radio ligands unlike positron emission tomography ERP studies can be conducted with relatively simple paradigms compared with IE block design fMRI studies extremely uninvasive and like electrocardiography which actually requires electrodes to be placed on the surface of the brain EEG also has some characteristics that compare favorably with behavioral testing <laughs> EEG can detect covered processing that processing that does not require a response EEG can be used in subjects who are incapable of making a motor response some ERP components can be detected even when the subject is not attending to the stimuli and like other means of studying reaction time ERPs can elucidate stages of processing rather than just the final end result EEG is a powerful tool for tracking brain changes during different phases of life eeg sleep analysis can indicate significant aspects of the timing of brain development including evaluating adolescent brain maturation the eeg there is a better understanding of what signal is measured as compared to other research techniques the bold response in mri now there are some disadvantages in case of eeg low spatial resolution on the scalp fmri for example can directly display areas of the brain that are active while eeg require intensive interpretation just to hypothesize that areas are activated by a particular response eeg poorly measures neural activity that occurs below the upper layers of the brain the cortex region neurotransmitters drugs etc can be found and like pet and mris cannot identify specific locations in the brain at which various neurotransmitter drugs etc can be found often takes a long time to connect a subject to eeg as it requires precise placement of dozens of electrodes around the head and use of various gels saline solutions and or pastes to keep them in place although a cap can be used while the length of time differs depending on the specific eeg device used 
as a general rule it takes considerably less time to prepare a subject for MEG, FMRI, MRS or SPET. SP, ECT. Signal to noise ratio is poor, so sophisticated data analysis and relatively large numbers of subjects are needed to extract useful information from EEG. Now let's learn about Lesion studies. This is a type of neurophysiology. The removal of part of brain comparison is made between performance between and after the lesion and Consequent deficiencies are noted. This branch of neuropsychology sounds brutal. Out of often carried out when brain surgery is required to remove parts of the brain where epileptic seizures are known to organize, originate. Lesion studies have informed our understanding of which brain regions can be removed with minimal consequences for a patient. In practice, it is difficult to make a brain lesion that entirely removes one part of the brain while leaving the rest entirely intact. Lesions may damage other systems which happen to pass through the lesion site. Stimulation, neuropsychology or neuroscience. This involves feeding a signal, chemical or electrical, into some part of the neural circuit and measuring its consequences. Invasive stimulation involves surgery and is often carried out as part of a procedure to access which regions of the brain is it might be least disruption to lesion. For example, it is very important to leave brain regions associated with language processing intact so that surgery does not totally impair a person's ability to communicate. Non-invasive stimulation in the form of transcranial Magnetic resonance stimulation is a relatively recent development in the experimental neuroscience. Stimulation involves feeding a signal, chemical or electrical, into some part of a neural circuit and measuring its consequences. Invasive stimulation involves surgery and is often carried out as a part of a procedure to access which regions of the brain it might be least disruptive to lesion. For example, it is very important to leave brain regions associated with language processing intact so that surgery does not totally impair a person's ability to communicate. So non-invasive stimulation is in the form of transcranial magnetic stimulators. There's a relatively recent development in the experimental neuroscience. A coil is held up to the head of healthy participants positioned directly over the part of the brain which is intended to be temporarily stimulated and cause neurons on the surface of the brain nearest to the coil to discharge effectively temporarily lesion that brain region. This technique allows experiments to conduct lesion like studies in large number of participants. Wait a minute, we will be explaining that later. Non-invasive stimulation in the form of transranial magnetic stimulation is relatively recent development in the experimental neuroscience. A coil is held up to the head of the healthy participant, positioning directly over the part of the brain which is intended to be temporarily stimulated and causes neurons on the surface of the brain. Nearest the coil to discharge effective, effectively temporarily lesioning that brain region. This technique allows experiment, experimenters to conduct lesion-like studies on large number of participants. Difficulties of invasive stimulation involved. Delivering stimulation at an intensity that mirrors the level of activity that spontaneously occurs in the brain and determining which structure have been affected by the stimulation is a difficulty. Non-invasive stimulation is prone to some difficulties as lesion studies in localizing the temporarily induced lesions. Limitations of the magnetic field also mean that only areas of the surface of the brain can be stimulated and care must be taken to avoid stimulations in regions near muscle that might twitch as a result of their own stimulation. Now we are going to learn about the next electrophysiological method that is the positron emission tomography. Positron emission tomography or PET scan is a nuclear medicine functioning imaging technique that is used to observe metabolic processes in the body. The system detects pairs of gamma rays emitted indirectly by a positron emission nu radionuclide or tracer 
which is introduced into the body on a biologically active molecule. Three-dimensional images of tracer concentration within the body are then considered by computer analysis. In modern PET CT scanners, three-dimensional imaging is often accompanied with the aid of a CT X-ray scan performed on the patient during the same session on the same machine. If the biologically active molecule chosen for PET is a fluidoxy glucose an analog of glucose the concentration of tracer image will indicate tissue metabolic activity as it corresponds to regional glucose uptake use of this tracer to explore the possibility of cancer metastasis spreading of other sites is the most common type of pet scan in standard medical care 90 percent of current scans however although on a monetary basis and in minority cases Many other radioactive tracers are used in PET to image the tissue concentration of other types of molecules of interest. One of the disadvantages of PET scan is their operating cost. Next, what are the uses of PET scan? PET scan is both a medical and research tool. It is used heavily in clinical oncology or medical imaging of tumors and the research for metastasis. And for clinical diagnosis of certain diffuse brain diseases such as those causing various types of dementias. PET scan is also an important research tool to map normal human brain and heart function and support drug development. PET scan is also used in the preclinical studies using animals where it allows repeated investigations into the same subject. This is particularly valuable in cancer research as it results in an increase in the statistical quality of the data. Subjects can act as their own control and substantially reduces the numbers of animals required for a given study. Alternate methods of scanning include X-ray computed tomography, magnetic resonance imaging and functional magnetic resonance imaging, ultrasound and single photon emission computed tromography. While some imaging scans such as CT and MRI iso isolate organic anatomic changes in the body, PET and SPECT are capable of detecting areas of molecular biology detail even prior to the anatomic change. PET scan is also used in preclinical studies using animals where it allows repeated investigations into the same subjects. This is particularly valuable in cancer research as it results in an increase in the statistical quality of data. Subjects can act as their own control and substantially reduces the numbers of animals required for a given study. Alternative methods of scanning include X-ray computed tomography, magnetic resonance imaging and functional magnetic resonance imaging that is the fMRI, ultrasound and single photon emission computed tomography SPECT while some imaging scans such as CT and MRI isolate organic anatomic changes in the body. PET and SPECT are capable of detecting areas of molecular biology detail even prior to anatomic change. PET scan does this by using radio labeled molecular probes which have different rates of uptake depending on the type and function of tissue involved. Changing of regional blood flow in various anatomical structures as a measure of the injected positron emitter can be visualized and relatively quantified with a PET scan. PET imaging is best performed using a dedicated PET scanner. However, it is possible to acquire PET images using a conventional dual head gamma camera filled with a coincidence detector. The durability and the quality of gamma camera PET is considerably lower. The acquisition is slower. However, for institutions with low demand for PET, this may allow on site imaging instead of referring patients to another center or relaying a visit by a mobile scanner. PET is a valuable technique for some diseases and disorders because it is possible to target the radiochemicals used for particular bodily functions. Next technique is the clinical magnetic resonance imaging. Clinical magnetic resonance imaging. Clinical magnetic resonance imaging or clinical MRI is imaging techniques used in radiology to form pictures of the anatomy and the psychological processes of the body in both health and disease. MRI scanners use strong magnetic fields, radio waves and 
field gradients to generate images of the organ in the body. MRI does not involve X-rays which distinguish it from computer tomography. MRI does not involve X-rays which distinguish it from computer tomography, CT or CAT. While the hazards of X-rays are now well controlled in most medical contexts, MRI will be seen as superior to CT in this regard. MRI is widely used in hospitals and clinics for medical diagnosis, staging of disease and follow-up without exposing the body to ionizing radiation. MRI often may yield different diagnostic information com compared with CD. This may be have risks and discomfort associated with MRI. There may be risks and discomfort associated with MRI scans. Compared with CT scans, MRI scans typically take longer and are louder and they usually require that the subject enter a narrow confining tube. In addition, people with some medical implants or other non-removable metal inside the body may be unable to undergo a MRI examination safely. MRI was originally called NMRI like Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It is based upon the science of nuclear magnetic resonance. Certain atomic nuclei are able to absorb and emit radio frequency energy when placed in an external magnetic field. In clinical and research MR, that is hydrogen atoms are most often used to generate a detectable radio frequency signal that is received by antennas in close proximity to the anatomy being examined. Hydrogen atoms exist naturally in people and other biological organisms in abundance, particularly in water and fat. For this reason, most MRI scans essentially map the location and water and fat in the body. Pulses of radio waves excite the nuclear spin energy transition and magnetic field gradients localize the signal in space. By varying the parameters of the pulse sequence, different contrasts may be generated between tissues based on the relaxation property of the hydrogen atoms therein. Since it is early development in the 1970s and 1980s, MRI was proven to be a highly versatile imaging technique. MRI scans essentially map the location of water and fat in the body. Pulses of radio waves excite the nuclear spin resonance transition and magnetic field gradients localize the signal in space. By varying the parameters of the pulse, science, pulse sequence, different contrasts may be generated between tissues based on the relaxation properties of the hydrogen atoms there. Since its early development in the 1970s and 1980s, MRIs has proven to be a highly versatile imaging technique. While MRI are most prominently used in diagnostic medicine and biomedical research, it may also be used to deform images of non-living objects. MRI scans are capable of producing a variety of chemical and physical data in addition to detailed spatial image. The sustained increase in demand for MRI within the healthcare industry has led to concerns about cost effectiveness and overdiagnosis. Next is the functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI. Functional magnetic resonance imaging or functional MRI or fMRI measures brain activity by detecting changes associated with blood flow. This technique relies on the fact that cerebral blood flow and neuronal activity are coupled. When an area in the brain is in use, blood flow to that region also increases. The primary form of fMRI uses the blood oxygen level dependent contrast or bold contrast, blood oxygen level dependent contrast discovered by Ogeva. This is a type of specialized brain and body scan used to map neural activity in the brain's spinal cord of humans or other animals by imaging the change in blood flow. Hemodynamic response related to energy use by brain cells. Since the early 1990s, fMRI has come to dominate brain mapping research because it does not require people to undergo shots or surgery to ingest substances or to be exposed to ionizing radiation. fMRI has come to dominate brain mapping research because it does not require people to undergo shots or surgery to ingest substances or to be exposed to ionizing radiation. This measure is frequently computed and corrupted by noise from various sources, hence statistical procedures are used to exact, extract the underlying signal. The resulting brain activation can be graphically represented by color coding the strength of activation 
across the brain all the specific regions studied. The technique can localize activity to within millimeter but using standard techniques to better than within a window of a few seconds. Other methods of obtaining contrast are arterial spin labeling and diffusion MRI. The later procedure similar to bold fMRI but provides contrast based on the magnitude of diffusion of water molecules in the brain. fMRI is used both in the research field. fMRI is used both in the research world and to lesser extent in the clinical world. It can also be combined and complemented with other measures of brain psychology and physiology such as EEG and NIRS. Newer methods which improve both spatial and time resolution are being researched and is largely used by biomarkers other than the bold signal. Some companies have developed commercial products such as lie detectors based on fMRI techniques but the research is not believed to be ripe enough for widespread commercialization. Next one is the CT scan, computed tomography. A CT scan, also known as a computer tomography scan, makes use of computed pro computer processed combinations of many X-ray measurements taken from different angles to produce cross-sectional tomographic images or virtual slices of specific areas of a scanned objects, allowing the user to see inside the object without cutting. Other terms include computed axial tomography and computer aided tomography. So, what is used here? Here we are using many X-ray measurements taken from different angles to produce cross-sectional that is tomographic images or like visual slices of specific areas of a scanned object. Here we are scanning is performing. So allowing the user to see inside the object without cutting. We won't be making any cuts but we can see the inside just by scanning process. This scanning involves X-ray measurements taken from different angles and this creates a cross-sectional image. Digital geometry processing is used to further generate a three-dimensional volume of the inside of the object from a large series of two-dimensional radiographic images taken around a single axis of rotation. Medical imaging is the most common application of X-ray CT. Its cross-sectional images are used for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes in various medical disciplines. The rest of this article discusses medical imaging, X-ray CT, industrial applications of X-ray CT are discussed at industrial computer tomography scanning. The term computer tomography is often used to refer to X-ray CT because of it's the most commonly known form but many other types of CT exist such as positron emission tomography and single Follow-on emission computer tomography, X-ray tomography, a pre desert of series, one form of radiography, along with many other forms of tomographic and non-tomographic radiography. CT produces that data that can be manipulated in order to demonstrate various bodily structures based on their ability to absorb the X-ray beam. Although historically the images generated were in the axial or transverse plane perpendicular to the long axis of the body, modern scanners allow this volume, volume of data to be reformatted in various planes or even as volumetric representations of structures. Although most common in medicine, CT is also used in other fields such as non-destructive material testing. Another example is archaeological uses such as imaging and contents of sarcophagy. Individuals responsible for performing CT exams are called radiographers or radiologic technologists. Use of CT has increased dramatically over the last two decades in many countries. An estimated 72 million scans were performed on the United States in 2007. One study estimated that as many as 0.5% of current cancers in the United States are due to CTs performed in the past and that this may increase to as high as 1.5 to 2% with 2007 rates of CT use. However, this estimate is disputed as there is not a consensus about the existence of damage from low levels of radiation. Side effects from intravenous contrast used in some types of studies include kidney problems. 
so let's have a now let's have a quick recap of all the sessions we have dealt earlier so first we will be learning about the brain imaging techniques introduction to brain brain imaging techniques and other methods a number of techniques are available to investigate the question of how and where in the brain particular perceptual and cognitive processes occur tasks or tests can be devised that place varying levels of demand on the cognitive sensory or motor capacities of the participant being tested performance of this tasks is then correlated with psychological measurements and in the basis of this test we may go to the description and description of functions to areas of the brain now while there is a growing fascination with the imaging techniques in the popular media this is your brain on politics it's important to bear in mind that each technique has limitations that often doesn't get picked up on by newspaper editors who themselves have little or no experience using them in most often <clears throat> overlooked limitation is the issue of reverse inference just because cognition x-ray cognition x is associated with brain activation y using one's memory and activation in the prefrontal cortex that doesn't mean that if a participant displays activation y that is necessary engaging in cognition x below we highlight some key neurophysiological and neuroscientific techniques and a few of their limitations there is also a number of great blocks that deal with issues relating to neuroscience particularly in the propular purse now testing brain damage subjects neuro psychology neuropsychology the precursor to modern neuroscience allowed us to learn a great deal about brain function by examining people with specific non brain injuries cognitive changes are often reported in people who have suffered some kind of brain injury the damage radius are a good indicator of the brain regions that are important for the cognitive function that has been changed by the injury one of the most striking example of this form of neuropsychology was carried out on a railroad construction worker following an explosive accident and he survived a cylindrical iron rod being driven completely through his head this destroyed his left frontal lobe and changed his personality so much that his friends described him as no longer that same person while little formal psychological testing was carried on this person and it out about changes in his behavior are used to illustrate the role of the frontal lobes in healthy decision making the emotion other notable courses include patients hm and tan who have informed modern psychological understanding of the brain development and involvement in memory and speech production specific deficits in processing are rarely found without the occurrence of other deficits psychological observations are usually only over ever made after the event and therefore lack adequate experimental control lesion studies the removal of part of the brain comparison is made between performance before and after the lesion and consequential deficits are noted this branch of neuropsychology sounds brutal but it is often carried out when brain surgery is required to remove parts of the brain where epileptic seizures are not to originate lesion studies have performed informed our understanding of which brain region can be removed with minimal consequences for the patient in practice it is difficult to make a brain lesion that entirely removes one part of the brain with leaving the rest entirely intact lesions may damage other systems which happen to pass to the lesion site next is the stimulation neuropsychology neuroscience this involves feeding a signal chemical or electrical into some part of the neural circuit and measuring its consequences invasive stimulation involves surgery and is often carried out as part of the procedure to assess which regions of the brain it might be less destructive to lesion this involves feeding a signal stimulation we are learning about stimulation and having a quick summary about the stimulation techniques this involves feeding a signal chemical or electrical into some part of the neural circuit and measuring its consequences invasive stimulation involves surgery and is often carried out as part of the procedure to assess which regions of the brain it might be last disruptive to lesion 
For example, it is very important to leave brain lesion associated with language processing intact so that surgery does not totally impair a person's ability to communicate. Non-invasive stimulation in the form of transrenal magnetic stimulation is a relatively recent development in the experimental neuroscience. A coil is held up to the head of the healthy participant, positioning directly over the part of the brain which is intended to be temporarily stimulated and causes neurons on the surface of the brain nearest to the coil to discharge, effectively temporarily lesioning that brain region. This technique allows an experiments to conduct lesion-like studies on large number of participants. A coil is helped up to the head of the healthy participants, positioning directly over the part of the brain which is intended to be temporarily stimulated and causes neurons to the surface of the brain nearest to the coil to discharge effectively temporarily lesioning that brain region. Difficulties of invasive stimulation involve delivering stimulation at an intensity that mirrors the level of activity that spontaneously occurs in the brain and determining which structures have been affected by the stimulation. Non-invasive stimulation is prone to the same difficulties as lesion studies in localizing the temporarily induced lesions. Limitations of the magnetic field also mean that only areas on the surface of the brain can be stimulated and care must be taken to avoid stimulation in regions near muscles that might twitch as a result of their own stimulation. First one is the single cell recording. Neuroscience Microelectrode recordings indicate specific neuronal networks decided to processing particular stimuli like bars of a certain orientation, movement in a particular direction, particular objects like faces. For much of the 1950s, psychologists probed the visual cortex using this technique. Next is the CT scan. This technique takes advantage of the fact that X-rays reflect the relative density of the tissue through which they pass. If a narrow X-ray beam is passed through the same object at many different angles, it is possible to use computational techniques to construct a visual image of the brain. Prolonged or repeated exposure to ionizing radiations can cause tissue damage. Thus, as with X-rays, CT scans are used sparingly. Additionally, only structural information about the brain can be gathered. This is perfect for identifying problems in brain tissue, but gives a little insight into how the brain functions during cognition. That is the shortcoming of CT. Now the PET scan. Positron emission tomography involves introducing a low activity, short lasting radioactive label to compounds like glucose or oxygen in the brain. Radioactive labels decay in characteristic way, giving off subatomic particles or positrons by surrounding the subject's head with a detector array connected to a suitable computer. It is possible to build up images of the brain showing different levels of radioactivity and therefore cortical activity. It's expensive, inaccessible and sometimes lack of temporal and spatial resolution will be happening. In, now the next technique is fMRI or Functional magnetic resonance imaging. This measures changes in oxygen levels in the brain, which is an indicator of blood flow. So this functional magnetic resonance imaging, this measures changes in oxygen levels in the brain, which is indicator of blood flow, a property of cortical activity. The amount of oxygen carried in the blood affects the blood's magnetic property. FMRI can detect functionally induced changes in blood oxygenation with spatial resolution of 2 mm. This technique builds on the foundation laid by MRI scanning which is similar to CT in only measuring the structure of the brain. Functional M MRI uses contrasts that are weighted for detection of blood oxygenation. The assumption here is that activation in brain regions necessitates the delivery of more blood than would be required if the brain regions were inactive. This finding typically see reported are the results of subtraction con contracts, usually active condition, control condition. Subtraction contra contracts such as those shown in the right give the impression that very little activation is occurring in the brain at any one time but 
and this is misleading in fact all of the brain is active all of the time the difference are in the degree of activation the awareness that brain activation is always present has to a new understanding of functional brain systems known as functional connectivity networks or resting connectivity networks using functional connectivity analysis it is possible to scan participants when they are not actively engaged in any cognitive tasks and to build a picture of brain regions whose activation increase and decrease in contrast over a prolonged time period about 10 seconds from peak to peak functional connectivity networks such as those shown in the they know different functional networks give a good idea of the way activating patterns persist across different regions of the brain even when people are in actively thinking this suggests that the brain maintains a holding pattern of activation that groups regions that are typically recruited by various cognitive tasks like memory systems control systems etc problems fmri is expensive and has poor temporal resolution whole brain images can typically only be collected every 2 seconds eeg neuroscience electroencephalogram and event related potentials electrochemical signals are the basis of wait a minute functional connectivity networks such as those shown on the left different regions in the brain even when people don't actively think this suggests that brain maintains a holding pattern of activation that groups regions that are typically recruited by various cognitive tasks if mri is expensive and has poor temporal resolution whole brain images can typically only be collected every 2 seconds next is the eeg electroencephalogram or event related potentials Electrochemical signals are the basis of communication between nerve cells and this can be recorded at the scalp. The first recording from the human brain was published in 1924. The amplitude of normal EEG varies approximately between minus 100 and plus 100 microvolts. The EEG recorded at the scalp is only a gross measure of the activity of large number of neurons but several frequency patterns may be distinguished in the EEG. waves which occur in normal eeg include the delta rhythm at 1 to 4 hertz and the theta rhythm at 4 to 8 hertz the alpha rhythm at 8 to 12 hertz and beta rhythm at 13 to 20 hertz two measurements are commonly used to analyze an eeg record the amplitude or size of the wave and the number of waves per second broadly speaking the more relaxed a person is the greater the amplitude and the lower the frequency of the waves the lower the amplitude and the greater the frequency than the more likely it is that the person is in an excited state about 20 electrodes are normally applied place according to the about 20 electrodes are normally applied placed according to the 10 by 20 system developed by japs in the system each electrode is placed in terms of its proximity to a particular brain regions frontal central temporal parietal and occipital sides are given an odd number when the left side of the head an even number on the right and midline electrons are labeled z the most common form of erp recording is made between a scalp electrode located on the site of the interest and reference electrode usually placed at a site which is relatively uninfluenced by the electrical activity of experimental interest recordings are based on the difference involved between each exploring electrode and the common reference electrode eye and jaw movements can cause fluctuating electrical fields across the scalp the subjects are requested to remain still and to minimize eye blinks or movements eye movement is also recorded with the eeg so that trials on which there are gross movements can be eliminated or corrected from the analysis current systems can record from up to 128 sites simultaneously using a genocide density array sensor net by making maps of the EP, erps at different times after the stimulus event and relative times at which certain brain areas become active with processing information can be determined spatial resolution is poor in comparison to other imaging techniques now let's learn about the mri 
MRI is a non-invasive imaging technology that produces three-dimensional detailed anatomical images about the use of damaging radiation. It is often used for digestion detection, I'm sorry, disease detection, diagnosis and treatment monitoring. It is based on the sophisticated technology that excites and deletes the change in the direction of the rotational axis of protons found in the water that make up living tissues. MRI employ powerful magnetics which produce a strong magnetic field that forces protons in the body to align with that field. When a radio frequency current is then pulsated to the patient, the protons are stimulated and spin out of equilibrium, straining against the pull of the magnetic fields. When the radio frequency field is turned off, the MRI sensor are able to detect the energy released as the protons regain the magnetic field. So they are out of align out of the equilibrium, straining against the pull of the magnetic field. When the radio frequency field is turned off, the MRI sensors are able to detect the energy released as the protons realign with the magnetic field. The time it takes for proteins to realign with the magnetic field as well as the amount of energy released changes depending on the environmental and the chemical nature of the electrodes of the molecules. Physicians are able to tell the difference between various types of tissues based on this magnetic properties. To obtain a magnetic MRI image, a patient is placed inside a large magnet and must remain very still during the imaging process in order not to blur the image. Contrast agents often containing this element, gadolinium may be given to a patient intravenously before or during MRI to increase the speed at which protons realign with the magnetic field. The faster the protein, protons realign, the, far, the brighter the image. What is MRI used for? MRI scanners are particularly well suited to image the non-bony parts or soft tissues of the body. They differ from computer tomography in that they do not use the damaging ionizing radiation of X-rays. The brain, spinal cord and nerves as well as muscles, ligaments and tendons and seen much more clearly with MRI and with regular X-rays and CT for this reason MRI is more often used to image knee and shoulder injuries.